Is God truly great, rock or sand? If you'll turn with me to Luke 6:46, I came across this one, and it might be a short video, but I came across it. It's very important on how in your life, brothers and sisters in Christ, how God can be reflected as being great. Now, we all know it's just a fact that God's truly great. But these studies are to encourage the brethren to make sure that your life and your words, not just your words, but your words also, and your life, how you live, and what you do, and your attitudes towards certain things, to make sure that they reflect to brothers and sisters in Christ and the lost world, and to yourself even, that God is truly great. So, uh, first, rock equals the word of men. Now, the story that we get to, if you've already turned there, people like to use it for, you know, saved versus lost. But if you actually listen for instruction and in righteousness, this is aimed at you and me, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? Rock equals the word of men. Sand is the word... I'm sorry, I said it backwards. Rock is the word of God. The word rock. Think of it in your head. Rock is the word of God. Sand is... This is the word of men. Okay. Yeah, it said, saved versus lost. For instruction and righteousness, for saved only that obey God's word. I'm talking to brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm only addressing this to brothers and sisters in Christ. If you're lost, I got a salvation message um, on my channel. Uh, a much needed message. If you want to look that up, okay. Here, I'm a King James Bible believer. You want to find the word of God, which is in the Bible, the word, the word of God. You'll find it today for English in the King James Bible. So, Luke 6, 46. And why call ye me Lord, capital L, Lord, capital L, and do not the things which I say? In other words, this is Jesus speaking, and they're calling him Lord. Uh, capital L is, um, we'll get to here, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, you know. There is one God, capital G God, the Father, and one capital L, Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. And in the Old Testament, you'll see it over and over and over again, Lord God, Lord God, Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. They are one. So there's people here claiming that Jesus is God, Lord, Lord, but they don't do the things which he says. Now, we as brothers and sisters of Christ, we've come across a lot of false converts out there that do that. Oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, but they don't want to keep his word. Okay, John 14, 23. And this is to encourage you that we need to be obeying God's word. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. I quote this verse a lot because it's very important. If a man love me, this is Jesus speaking, if you truly love Jesus, you're going to keep his perfect written word, King James Bible, for English speaking people. Okay. When we say Jesus, Lord, Jesus is Lord, uh, it's not just words. We'll find that out here real quick. Verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, the word of God, and doeth them not. Get a hold of that. We'll get back to it in just a second. I will show you to whom he is like. Notice there it says, Heareth my sayings, and doeth them not. They go together. It's not enough to hear it. Are you doing it? Okay. And notice it says, Cometh to me. Okay. Uh, people just uh, remember the word of God, but Jesus... Uh, the Holy Spirit's going to be in you, and He's going to reveal Himself to you through the Word of God. Someone said that the Bible, and I love this saying, the Bible is the only book, the King James Bible, is the only book that the author is present every time you read it. But it's not enough just to read the Bible. It's not enough to listen to Alexander Scorvey all day. It's not enough to listen to Bible studies all day. I do it. But the question you've got to ask yourselves, brothers and sisters in Christ, are you living it? Right here, if not my sayings, and doeth them. I'm sorry, whoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, are you doing them? Okay. There are two parts that we just, we just talked about. Not just hearing them, but doing them. Turn to Romans 10, 17. 
It is so important. The changed life is so important. Okay? But more importantly, you can't have the changed life without a perfect written word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing. Remember it says the hearing is my saying to do with them. And hearing by the word of God. Okay? Faith cometh by hearing. The word of God is how, where you're supposed to have your faith. Not in men. Remember, rock is the word of God. Sand is the word of men. Your faith isn't supposed to be in the word of men. Your faith is supposed to be in the word of God. Psalms 138.2 This is how important God puts on his word. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Okay, come to me. How many people were crying out? A lot of my studies they did. Um, Bartimaeus, uh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, he kept screaming it. It's not enough to scream the name. He got called and he came to Jesus. Okay. So, God himself put so much importance on his word. So much importance on his word. Uh, verse 48. This is what God likens a man that here it comes to him, heareth his sayings, salvation comes to him, heareth his sayings, the word of God tells us how to find salvation and how to live our lives after salvation. So in other words, not just to hear it, but do with it. Three parts. We've come to him. The Bible has taught us how we found salvation, reminds us how we found salvation, found salvation uh, led us to God's grace, God saving us, but also instructs us on how we're supposed to live now as servants of the Lord. Okay? That's His property, which a lot of people don't like to hear. Verse 48, He's like a man which built a house and digged it deep and laid the foundation on a rock. King James Bible. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Okay. Real quick, I wanted to throw this in Deuteronomy 32, 31. Remember, part of that was coming to Jesus. Uh, hearing what he has to say, his instructions, and doing them. Doing them. Okay. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Now notice it said flood there and stream there. Okay. And real quick, before we get to that, I've got to throw it in here real quick. When people say, um, what is the, you, know, you can get saved without the word of God. Well, the Bible says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. It's only because we have a perfect written word of record, per perfect written record, if I can get it out, that you're able to get saved, find salvation, lead you to God's grace. So, um, very important to remember that, brothers and sisters in Christ. But for us today, when you make your foundation on the Word of God, the floods will come and the streams will beat vehemently. The flood, men's wisdoms, words. Men's wisdom and words, false doctrine, false terms. Basically, it comes down to sand. We have our foundation on a rock. Okay. Your home, if it's founded on a rock, we talked about the encouragement to encourage the brothers and sisters in Christ to continually sanctify your life. The uh, Bible says, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Um, you make your home the foundation on a rock, no. He's hearing noises. No. Stay. Um, foundation on a rock, it's going to be strong. Your personal foundation, your marriage, your, your marriage foundation on the rock, your family's foundation is on the rock. Okay? The flood will come. Men are going to come to you and say, well, you know, this isn't really a sin, you know, we're going to have to agree to disagree. One of the biggest things that really frustrated me when I was talking with, supposed to be a brother in Christ, I can't say yes or no, err on the side of caution, 
I came across him on Facebook and he was playing Elder Scrolls Online and I used to play that. After I got saved, I still played it, you know, but I struggled with it and it got to the point where God said, through scripture, abstain from all appearance of evil. That game has paganism, uh, immodestly dressed women, sexual contact, violence. Uh, the Bible says you live by the sword, you shall die by the sword. And it's just just so pagan. I mean, actual pagan gods in there, pagan symbols all over. Uh, witchcraft it is such a wicked game. And I told him, this is what the Word of God says. And his response was that he has liberty to do what he wants. He's got liberty to sin. And you're going to have people like that, that men's words and wisdom coming through, they're trying to justify sin. And they're going to try to push you to justify sin. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. You know, drinking's not that big of a deal, alcohol. Um, smoking's not really that big of a deal. Yeah, you probably shouldn't do it. Um, you know, uh, drugs, you know, fornication. Um, some of these it's kind of hard to justify, but you'll be surprised on how, how much people will try to justify some of these when there's just no justifying it. Um, and they're going to try to push you to compromise. They're going to use their words and their wisdom to get you away from the Word of God. God is shown as being great in your life when you stand for this Word, when the Word of God is your foundation. Remember, He elevates it above His name. Okay. You want God to be truly great in your life, make sure your foundation is the Word of God. Now, examples, I already went through a couple, but examples of the flood and the streams that are kind of come in your life, brothers and sisters, the Trinity. Okay, I've mentioned it before, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. There's but one capital G, God, the Father, and one capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ. And they're going to come along and say, yeah, you know, let's put this Bible to the side. Okay, we're going to use terms like triune, God, which isn't in the Bible. Trinity, which isn't in the Bible. God and three persons, which isn't in the Bible. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, which isn't in the Bible. And sometimes they'll go and say, you know, that, uh, you know, it just, they're going to say anything and everything, but the only way they can try to get you to start building your foundation with sand is to get you away from this book. You want your life to start falling apart? Get away from the book. It's, it's just, you don't want to do that. Okay? You're going to be attacked for standing for the Godhead. But the more you stand for the Godhead because you're standing for the Word of God and the Word of God is your foundation, you're going to start showing how great God is in your life. So brothers and sisters in Christ, giving them encouragement to stand for the Word of God, uh, proving false converts, and to the lost world that God is great in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. God is in you. Jesus is in you. Okay. Uh, people, what is it, works... See, see, you can earn salvation, the faith alone crowd. You can earn salvation, or those that tell you you have to do good works and remain in a state of grace. Uh, they're trying to trade for God's grace. So you've either earned it according to these faith alone people, or you're trying to pay for it, trade for it, your good works for God's grace. And the only way, only way they can do this is to, stray, to try to convince people is to stray from the Word of God. Okay, faith alone isn't in the Bible. Okay, and I've said this before. Why don't they say grace alone? Now, granted, the word grace alone is not in the Bible. Those words, but why don't they say grace alone? Because the Bible says in Ephesians, let's see, Ephesians two eight, for by grace are ye saved through faith. But for by grace are you saved, and the faith alone people say, for by grace you are saved by your faith. They turn faith into works. And they're going to try to pull you and pull you and pull you away from the Word of God. Okay? They're going to take Scripture and say, that doesn't apply to us. And they're going to throw it away like it's toilet paper. Uh, no. Don't let them pull you from the Word of God. Okay? You and I were saved by God's grace. He saved us. We can't save ourselves. We didn't earn God's grace with our faith. True biblical salvation is repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance happens in the heart. Sorrow for sinning against God. 
only that sorrow can your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross happen here. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, through 4, it talks about how you can believe in vain. It has the gospel, how that Jesus died, was resurrected. It talks about how you can believe that in vain. How can you believe it in vain? Because it's up here, unless you believed in vain. It's up here when you skip repentance. The Bible teaches you're to repent before salvation. For godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation. It happens before salvation. And when you have that repentance, that sorrow for sinning against God, it happens in the heart, not just the head knowledge saying, oh yeah, I'm a sinner, we're all sinners. Then your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross happens here. Then the Bible says you're to confess both in prayer and you're to call upon the name of the Lord to save you. All of those takes faith. Repent, believe, confess, call upon the name of the Lord. All of those takes faith. But what they have to do is they have to ignore those scriptures that say unto salvation, true biblical salvation has always been God saving you. God's grace saving you. It's always been that. And they'll try to take it away and say, well, yeah, that's true, but you can earn it. You can earn it with your faith. Faith alone. Oh, you can trade good works for it. You just got to die in a state of grace. The Catholic Church teaches. So they'll try to pull you away from the foundation, God's Word, His sayings, the Bible. Uh, talks about the Gospel. Uh, eternal security. Uh, you'll have people try to take from that to the Word of God. They'll try to mess up the Word of God. They'll try to add to it. They'll try to pull you away from the King James Bible and get you towards these Bible perversions. Um, so... Uh, 1 John 5.13 was one, these things, are these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Also it says we're sealed into the day of redemption. We belong to God. When you get saved, you belong to God. Salvation belongs to God. It's nothing that we are doing. It goes back to the gospel. You're not saved by your faith. Um, Bible version issue. Matthew 24, 35, Mark 13, 31, Luke 21, 33, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. These are major doctrines where they're trying to pull you away from the word of God. Okay? When you stand for these things, when you stand for the Godhead that's found in Scripture, when you stand for the true gospel that's found in Scripture, the rock, eternal security, that there is a perfect written word of God for us today because He promised to preserve them. God, its word has not passed away. But the main focus of this for you, brothers and sisters in Christ, has to do with the changed life. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that's going to reflect. Yes, our stand and our stand, but notice what it said. Heareth my saying and doeth them. It's not just about words. It's about action. Okay? The biggest thing today that we see is Babel buildings, traditions of men. Okay, um, This is the way we've always done it. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, that's the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and I even threw in the scribes. Why? Because tradition today states that you have to go to a college, get wisdom from men, get this little piece of paper that, that men's given you permission, not God. God didn't give you the wisdom. God didn't ordain you and say, hey, I want you in the ministry. No, you just chose yourself to go to these Bible colleges. They get uh, titles like pastor, doctor, um, reverend, and all this stuff, and it's not found in the Bible. So that's why I threw in scribes there, because today they try to tell you, you've got to go to this college so they can basically tear the Bible down, God's perfect written word, brainwash you, um, and get you to be a servant of Satan. So, um, well, I know it wasn't always that way, but it's that way today. So, um, 49, let's see what God likens to a person who doesn't obey. But he that heareth, notice it says heareth, um, Notice at 47, let's go back to 47 for a second. Notice it says, Cometh to me and heareth my sayings. Look at 49. But he that heareth and doeth not, where is the cometh to me? Okay, it's not there. 
I understand how people do this for salvation, but there's more to it, not to salvation, but there's more to this story, this parable, than just salvation. It's also talking to us. So, you don't come to the Lord, uh, but he also says, But he that heareth and doeth not, heareth and doeth not, the true gospel, the changed life, instruction righteousness, the major doctrine. Okay, Bible version issue. But he that heareth it, never makes it down to hear, but they doeth it not. It is like a man that without a foundation, a rock, built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Remember, sand, words of men, following men over the word of God. If you stray from this book, they can get you. The Trinity people can get you. If they can get you to stray from this book. The false gospel people can get you. Uh, people who turn, go against eternal security, they can get you. Your home, your life, your walk with the Lord, when it comes to instruction righteousness, will fall apart if you turn from the rock. Jesus Christ and His Word. Okay? And immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. If you're truly saved, truly, truly saved, brothers and sisters in Christ, and I'm not questioning, I'm just saying this, let me, the whole thing. If you're truly saved, and you turn from this book, your life is going to fall apart. And the world's going to see it and say, look at him. If this man's supposed to be, this woman, this man's supposed to be a Christian. God evidently is not that great. I mean, look at them. They're falling apart. Their lives are falling apart. So, remember, we need to reflect in our hearts, in our words, in our life. We need to reflect that God is truly great. It's not just stating a fact. It's living it, believing in it. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, please, 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 continue to make sure that this is your foundation. Okay. The King James Bible. If it's not in here, don't use it. If someone tries to tell you that this is wrong, make it make them prove through Scripture and the King James Bible and make sure they're using every verse, not just picking and choosing. Make sure they're not taking stuff out of context. Okay. Make sure they're not adding and subtracting to the Word of God. Okay? But most importantly, are you following this book? Are you keeping His sayings? Not just hearing them, but keeping them. Okay? I struggle with sin. I know you do struggle with sin. And the only way to fight sin is through the Word of God. Um, thy, thy Word have I hidden, I think it's Thine Word have I hidden my heart, that I might not sin against Thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. The moment you put this to the side, you start falling apart. And the lost world sees it. Brothers and sisters in Christ see it. Your family sees it. Your wife or your husband sees it. Okay, your children are going to see it. Um, as a professing Christian, uh, my nephew, I told him, I don't play video games anymore. The remote, I haven't yet to find... Uh, one video game that if you haven't truly researched it that don't have something even so small as something pagan and sinful in it. And I went to my brother's house and my nephew's there. Let's play video games. I like I don't play video games anymore. So I played some board games with them. I jumped on the trampoline with them. And over time of being there I fell into the temptation and I put a video game on my tablet and started playing it. And you know what? He came up to me and he said, that's not fair. You told me you don't play video games and you've got a video game on your tablet. They can see it, brothers and sisters in Christ. They can see it. Even children can see it. Okay? Make sure this is your foundation. Make sure that you're encouraging the brothers and sisters in Christ with this foundation, with this rock. Okay? Make sure you're proven to the lost world that you are saved. The changed life comes after salvation. It's evidence of salvation. You didn't get saved 
by good works. You do good works because you are saved and you belong to God, but because this is your rock. So brothers and sisters, make sure that you keep going over in your heart. I listen to this all day, Alexander Scorvey. I read it every morning, every night, and I'm talking to myself. I read it every morning, every night. I've got memory verses where I do the cards that I encourage the brothers and sisters to do. Memory verses, go for walks, read them, try to memorize them. Talk to the Lord about what they mean. Try to apply them to your life or what you've seen in the world. But it's not enough to do that. You've got to always reevaluate your life and say, Am I living this? Am I obeying the Word of God? Doing what He says I'm supposed to do. Doing what, make sure I'm not doing what He says you're not supposed to do. So, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. See you in the next video.